The prosecution calls more witnesses to the stand on day six of the Delphi double murders trial. Several witnesses interviewed about a man they saw on the Monon High Bridge the day Abby and Libby were murdered. Another, the current Howell County Sheriff who took over for former Sheriff Toby Lesenby, days after a major break in this case. Did that break? The arrest of Richard Allen back in 2022. So many questions though sparked by today's testimony. So let's get live now to Russ McQuaid who's there in Carroll County for the latest on everything that happened there in court today. Russ, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dan and Beershell. Well, after a slow start, today's the day when the prosecution's case against Richard Allen for the murders of Libby uh, German and Abby Williams in 2017 began to come together. It started this morning with Kathy Shank. She was an administrative assistant. She spent many years taking all of the written files, the interviews, plugging them into a data system when all of a sudden, in uh, September of 2022, she's going through the files. She pulls one out and goes, hey, this doesn't look right. It's a file of an interview done in 2017 with a man identified as Rick Allen Whiteman. His name's Richard Allen, but he lives on Whiteman Drive. It's misfiled. She looks at it. She goes, hey, this guy admits he was on the bridge that day walking on the trail. She takes it to uh, Liggett, um, Tony Liggett. He was the chief investigator back then, says, you need to look at this. Then we heard from the uh, law enforcement officer who did that original interview in 2017. It was only four or five days after the girls' bodies were discovered in February, and Richard Allen self-reported, called up and said, I want to talk to a law enforcement officer. Hey, I was on the bridge that day. Ask me any question. Uh, maybe people saw me up there. Here I am. This is how you find me. So the DNR officer wrote down that information and significantly he wrote down Alan's cell phone and its registration, its serial number. That interview is lost for years till it pops up in September of 22. Then within the next month in October of 22, October 13th, investigators bring in Richard Allen, sit him down, show him a picture of bridge guy and say, we think you're bridge guy. You killed these girls. He said, no way. That's not me. I'm out of here. Later that day, investigators, state police go back to Richard Allen's home on Whiteman Drive and they start doing a search. And in that search, they find several knives. Investigators say knives were used to kill the girls. They find a 40 caliber gun and they find a bullet that they say matches a bullet that was found at the murder scene. Lieutenant Jerry Holman is sitting in a car in Richard Allen's driveway while they're doing a search inside. And he goes, hey, if we tear up your house, tear up your drywall, we'll fill out a form. Don't worry, we'll repair your house. He says, Richard Allen says to him, why bother? it's all over. Later, when he says, do you want me to take you to your wife? Richard Allen says to him again, allegedly, why bother? It's all over. It's important to remember, Richard Allen had already been told earlier in the day he was a suspect and was advised of his Miranda rights. It was at that time the investigation then really honed in on Richard Allen, who within 10 days or so was in custody and charged with these murders. The pushback from the defense to Lieutenant Holman on the stand later this afternoon was, did you record that interview? Don't you usually record your interviews? We've only got your word that says he said this. There's no proof he said that. That's where we wrapped up testimony just about an hour ago here in Carroll County. Okay, Russ, thank you. Now, Allen's arrest, uh, which happened uh, right before the election in 2022 is something that was also noted, the timeline, that timeline also noted today in court. So how did the witness and well, jury really react to that insinuation that the arrest was perhaps politically motivated rather than a true lead in what had been at that time pretty much a cold case? I don't think the jury has any reaction to that at all. They're probably thinking this sounds like Carroll County politics, but this is another stone of the foundation the defense is trying to build towards a reasonable doubt verdict, which is if they can plant the seed, maybe Carroll County authorities were so desperate to get a, a, a suspect and to nail this down, get an arrest, and it just so happened to fall into place with this mystery interview that comes out of nowhere in the last six weeks or so before the November election when Tony Liggett is eventually elected sheriff after he's been in charge of this case for all these years. Then you add it up with some of the other uh, information the defense is trying to bring out. We're finding out about parts of interviews that are missing, evidence that wasn't collected. There's a lot of um, 
building blocks that the defense will attempt to use to show the jurors that if it comes down to a 50-50 split, he did it, he didn't do it, maybe insinuating that the investigation was slipshod from the start and missed a lot of uh, parts over seven and a half years, that might be the one part that convinces at least some jurors to go, you know what, maybe they got him, but this was such a ragged operation, how can we be sure that they've got the right man? Okay, Russ McQuaid reporting live in Delphi on day six of the Delphi murders trial. We'll check back with you next hour. Thanks again.